Today's high watt soundbite is all about cable management and the annual purge. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, that's five power supplies I just dug out of the back of my rack. Every one of these power supplies were powered by the AC mains and not a single one of them was terminated on the DC output side. Yeah, what a total mess that is. And talk about a waste of energy. I mean, all five of these power supplies are running for an entire year, not providing a function of any kind other than generating heat in my studio. So they're generating heat. All through the summer, I've got to counteract that heat with air conditioning. It's just so, so foolish. And, you know, no matter how much I try and stay on top of this and stay organized in my studio, it's unbelievable how easy it is to to sort of look at your racks and go, wow, what's going on? You know, I built this studio four years ago, and when I did, it was like an absolute roadmap. I mean, you can see that I went to some work to make sure that this setup was kind of organized and, and, and that I could look into the back of this rack and sort of make sense of it. Yeah, there are so many great reasons to take a few minutes every year and sort of dig into your own system and clean it up. There is absolutely no reason I should have had all of these power supplies plugged in over the last year. I mean, the power they consume, the heat they generate, every one of these transformers has a magnetic field that it creates. So regardless of how careful I am and how organized I try and stay throughout the year, this is a practice that I love to get up to every couple of years at the very minimum. In other words, I, I prefer to do this annually, but many times I just don't get around to it. Maybe you're banging into the new year with a brand new project and you just sort of don't get time to do some of these housekeeping things. It's amazing how fast a year and then two and sometimes three and four years can just fly by. You know, I built a few studios. The last studio that I had in Los Angeles, I didn't do any of this stuff. So I built a studio and I sort of just kept adding to it, right? For over a, almost a decade. And what a mess that place was when I went to tear it apart. I mean, I'm talking for 10 years, I never got in with vacuum cleaners and vacuumed out all the dust and the, and the crud that was, you know, being collected in the back of those racks. And it was an absolute mess. I mean, when I tore my studio apart in LA to make the move north, it took like a week for me to clean everything up. I'm talking 10 years of dust. And you know, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that that stuff is evil. It's not easy to clean. Like if you don't clean your studio regularly and get behind these racks and do some vacuuming, you get to a certain point, And I know this from experience where it's sort of like too late to do anything about it. The only way to correct the problem is what I had to do in LA, which was take every single cable apart and basically clean it by hand. So yeah, don't do that. Just take some Zen time annually, ultimately, but at the very least every couple of years and spend some Zen time in your studio just reorganizing things. So it's sort of unbelievable just how many cables I end up finding in my own setup that are totally non-terminated. In other words, they're just a bunch of cables in my setup that just have like loose ends hanging everywhere. Now, I know exactly why that mess gets created in the first place. It's just like a lot of you. Throughout the year, you're in the middle of a session, you're cranking. All of a sudden, you just have some very specific thing you have to patch that isn't part of a patch bay or something. Oh, yeah, I'll get my, my cables out and I'll start doing some kind of crazy cross patch that gets me through that session. And then in, just out of sheer laziness, I never get around to cleaning that patch up. And many times, I'll end up later on unplugging that patch from the system and then just leaving the cable there. So yeah, it's stuff like this that ends up making a really kind of negative impact on your studio. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, but when I set this studio up, I went to a lot of effort to make sure that it was quiet. I'm talking like really paying attention to having everything balanced and, and clean, you know, trying to organize AC lines and audio lines so that they're not crossing paths. So all of that initial effort in creating an ultra quiet studio from a wiring point of view, 
Yeah, that effort can get really messed up over time by adding a quick power supply here or there, or you know, maybe something that's not available in my patch bay that I have to patch an extra cable for. All of these kind of extra patches and throwing in power supplies and finding power supplies that are powered up but not actually feeding anything. All of these things can really degrade the sound of your studio. So yeah, the noise floor in your studio can be really affected over time. And a lot of times it goes totally undetected. Why? Because so many of the additions to your studio are adding such a subtle amount of noise that it's totally undetectable by itself. It's not until you start to kind of have the cumulative effect of all of these different things kind of compiling up before you actually notice it as an engineer in your studio, you know, where you're listening to that noise floor and you can actually hear it. So I really encourage everyone who's using their own space, whether it be a big studio setup or a tiny little corner in your bedroom, take the time annually to go through your setup. Instead of making it a really big annual task that you sort of have to do as a work project, make it fun. Almost make it like a challenge to see just how many cables you can find in your own setup. And certainly before you order any new cables, you've got to go through this procedure because I am constantly blown away with how many mic cables and patch cords and hard drive cables and power supplies I pull out of my own system on an annual basis that is not terminated on either end. I'm just like going, what are you doing with all this crud in here? Yeah, just see how many spare cables and power supplies you can find in your own setup.